John, you've been watching this for over 30 years. What, uh, what is your reaction to what the panelists have said so far? Well, uh, on one level, um, I don't deserve to be in their company because they're in the trenches actually uh, doing the real work, as all of you are as well. And, you know, journalists are sometimes compared to uh, the folks who sit up in the hills and after the battle, they come down and shoot the wounded. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, I come by this in some ways uh, rightfully in that uh, my late mother um, was the co-founder of a program called Working in the Schools in Chicago, which is the Chicago version of, of uh, Learning Leaders and the biggest tutoring program in, in uh, Chicago right now. And, and uh, I grew up in a household that was very devoted not just to education but to um, political change. Um, and social movements. When I was eight years old, uh, Martin Luther King was in our home. And the reason that I, I mentioned that, this was when he was living in a, a slum in Chicago to draw attention to the conditions in the North. The reason that I mentioned that is that I see what you all are involved in as part of a great social movement. Uh, change in this country does not come from the top most of the time. It doesn't come from the politicians except in response to social movements. So whether it was the abolitionist movement, the suffragist movement, uh, the uh, prohibition was a, was a movement, um, temperance. Uh, in our own time, uh, whatever side you're on, civil rights movement, the anti-abortion movement, these are the way things happen in our society. And I see education reform and the revitalization of American education as being in that tradition. And somebody I greatly respect, uh, Harris Wofford, who was in the Senate from Pennsylvania and was a college president at Bryn Mawr and the first head of AmeriCorps, he compares the education reform movement and the service movement, which are really part of the same movement and of which you are a member of both, to kind of where civil rights was in the late 1950s. It's just beginning to crest. There's been tremendous progress just in the last couple of years. I've been covering education reform for, for 15 years. There's been more change, positive change, in the last two years than in those prior years uh, combined. So the forces of the status quo are now on the defensive. Uh, and what do I mean by the force of the status quo? Just very briefly, uh, so I want, definitely want to hear from all of you. Um, when I was working on a book that I wrote that came out last year about Barack Obama's first year as president, I included a story uh, where he met privately with Arne Duncan after uh, Duncan had been selected as his Secretary of Education. And he said, uh, I have only, Obama said, I have only two ideas to leave you with. Um, the first is um, do what's right for kids, not for adult interest groups. Now that kind of sounds like a platitude, like do what's right for kids. It's mom and apple pie, everybody wants to do what's right for kids. But so much of our, uh, our education debate is, is really about adult interest groups whether it's uh, administrators, unions, uh, even um, parents. Uh, and and the, the focus really needs to be on what's right for the children. And there's a very easy test. You can really ask yourself on any issue and, and come out, I think, on the right side by asking whether it's ultimately good for the kids. So take an issue that was on the front page of the New York Times this morning, last in, first out that with these layoffs uh, in, in the city of New York, that those teachers who were last hired will be first laid off under union contracts. Is that good for kids? I can't see how. I don't know in what universe that's good for children uh, to have something that relies 100% on seniority with no room at all for whether the teacher is, is good or exceptional. Uh, that, that can't possibly be good for children. Uh, but higher pay for teachers, another important issue, yeah, that's good for kids. You're going to attract a higher quality uh, teacher. So um, you know, 
as you sort your way through these various kind of education uh, debates, oh, by the way, I need to say the last thing that, the second thing that the president-elect said was, don't put a stick in anybody's eye. And that's good advice for Arne Duncan and for uh, people who are in, in government. Uh, of course, in my business, that's what we do, so uh, I don't have to take that, that particular advice. But I think it's been helpful for Duncan in, in uh, being uh, uh, well regarded by all sides of the debate, that he, he disagrees without being disagreeable, which is very useful in these often fierce education uh, debates. But one part of it that relates to you that uh, I think uh, has bothered me recently is that um, you often see, uh, and I get mail uh, from, often from teachers, uh, and I'm very involved in helping teachers. I'm on the board of something called Donors Choose, which helps them get supplies for their classrooms. But uh, they feel, they get a little defensive when they see, you know, criticism of tenure and this kind of thing. And they say, you know, it's the fault of the families. It's about the families and the environment that they come from. And you, you all, being people in the education reform movement, you think that those conditions are irrelevant. And you hear that a lot. You think it's irrelevant what happens at home. As we've heard today, only a fool would think that it's irrelevant what happens at home. It obviously makes a huge contribution to how that student does. Uh, but it can't be an excuse. And too often it has become an excuse for subpar performance, to just blame everything on the home environment. And we now have enough examples of schools that take kids who are way behind when they come in, have terrible home environments, and they are learning and growing and prospering in ways that will knock your socks off. So there's great hope, great hope. Whenever you hear the, the grim statistics about kids not being prepared for college, very important to know the data, but not get despondent about it. We know that certain models can work, have worked to an exceptional degree. degree. So you all should be very hopeful about uh, your work and recognize that you're not just changing uh, uh, an individual young person, you're changing the life of this country. You're engaged in the most patriotic work that is going on in America today. So